It seems like each season on Dirt Tracks, we try to install, maintain, or outline the general abilities that you can expect from a quality track kit like the Camoplast T4S. But this season, I've got something just a little bit different in mind. Our 2012 Can-Am Outlander 1000 G2 is a very capable ATV in stock form. It's a totally redesigned ATV, and in my opinion, is one of the best sport utilities out there. However, when you put it to the test on the toughest trails out in our neck of the woods, there are many areas where I know I could benefit huge from a set of tracks and make light work of otherwise tough terrain situations. We've gone ahead and installed three of the four T4S Four Seasons tracks on our Outlander 1000 G2, and the fourth is super easy to put on when we follow the instructions the Camoplast has given us. Installing a track kit does take some time and will require strict attention to the manufacturer's directions to ensure a proper fit and the best performance possible from the kit. Camoplast design is very advanced and will give my Outlander the best track performance possible when I follow the manufacturer's specs on torque, track tension, and maintenance. If you're going to make the significant investment into a track kit, you want to make sure you've done your homework, researched all the different designs, and are making an informed decision. So before I go any further with the testing, I want to tell you about a couple of the key benefits that Camoplast offers. They're things that I consider to be must-haves. Firstly, Camoplast is a track company at heart, and they know how to build a technically advanced track with rounded edges on the front and aggressive but manageable lugs. The front tracks on the T4S kit make steering effort reduced without losing grip. The track is designed for four season use and will happily tackle mud, sharp rocks, or hard packed surfaces without any issues or worry of delamination or derailment. The frame of the 4S is designed to withstand abuse and shed ice, mud, and debris from within the tracks, and thanks to multiple idler wheels with elastomer outer bands, they will continue to work year after hardworking year. Because the T4S kit is a true four season design, it doesn't matter if you put it on early, leave it on late, or just let it stay there all year long. They're designed for the abuse of four seasons use. Whether you drive a big, work-focused side-by-side demanding the best hauling performance in the harshest conditions, or just want to play in some snow, the 4S tracks are also available for your side-by-side -side and truly deliver outstanding performance in snow, rocks, and mud, increasing your workability when traversing the most brutal terrain. With all that being said, you may wonder what I'm going to be doing with the Outlander. Well, there's many places that I find tracks to be hugely beneficial. So what better way to show you than a head-to-head -head competition with this Renegade 1000 equipped with wheels? Utilizing these two ATVs that are very similar in design, we're going to shoot out our tracked Outlander G2 against a stock 2012 Can-Am Renegade 1000 G2. The same power plant is under the seat of these two vehicles, with the main difference being the suspension and bodywork. But at the heart, these vehicles share a very similar overall design. Point A to point B on a smooth, fast section of trail is going to net an obvious winner. And Camoplast doesn't claim blazing speeds from their track kits. It's in the truly tough and technical trail conditions that these track kits show their abilities. Utilizing a rider who knows his stuff and will ride hard is essential to having a fair race. So who better than our logistics manager, Jeff, who not only works hard, but rides even harder. With Jeff on the Renegade, I'll have to push this track kit at ATV harder than I ever have in the past. But one thing I know to be true is slow and steady can win the race. The trail I chose is called the Miserable Lake Trail. And yes, it's truly miserable, featuring deep mud, technical rock sections, and steep hills. Even the most advanced rider is gonna feel challenged here. And while momentum between the obstacles will come in handy, a vehicle equipped with tires, well, might just become tired. We rode together for the first section. I anticipated Jeff would pull out a huge lead, but I didn't worry too much because we both knew what lies ahead. My Camoplast tracks kept up a steady and solid trail speed and led me to the first of many technical trail sections. The first of the nasty sections that we encountered is one that truly sucks you in. It's been run and rutted out by big wheelers so much that they've dug huge trenches and it makes getting stuck with a stock ATV super easy not to mention getting caught up on all the debris at the bottom of those ruts. C4 
seeing as most ATVs have a nearly identical stance, the ruts are really hard to counteract with tires. You can straddle them or attempt to use momentum, but many riders before us have done the same thing, and these holes are truly deep. On the flip side, the 4S tracks don't really care about traditional wheel spacing and have a significantly increased width along with much greater ground clearance and way better traction. Track hit one, tires zero. A track kitted ATV naturally increases your ground clearance and delivers a way better ability to traverse technical terrain both in mud and through technical rocky sections, where with a wheeled ATV, you may have to impact a rock, potentially damaging your rim or your tire to save from impacting your frame. The difference in ground clearance is significant between the two vehicles. Jeff needs to be careful of being high centered, clipping rocks on the frame and catching roots or stumps, while I have the ability to breeze right over just about anything the trail delivers. The second half of the Miserable Lake Trail features some pretty steep hills. They've got off cambers on them and around this time of the year can become pretty slick. The truth is, the hardest part of this climb is not the climb itself. The approach to this hill is very different from most, where a water crossing scattered with hidden rocks must first be traversed. The water was cold and dark, not allowing for a view of what might be lurking below. The tracks didn't skip a beat, clawing at the rocks and churning the water inside out. The transition out of the water was absolutely seamless, and the tracks never for a second lost grip on the granite surface. The track's ability to bridge gaps is incredible, thanks to the fact that a track is so much longer than that of a tire. The articulation also helps for the track to be able to claw up and over just about anything, no matter whether it's wet or dry. After running this section with the track kit, I knew Jeff would have his hands full. The submerged rocks make transitioning very difficult, and if you don't make the correct approach, can even cause the vehicle to get high centered on the sharp granite. Once Jeff made it out of the water, I knew he'd be back on my tail. While I am able to make up great time in the hardest areas of this ride, Jeff has speed. And even though he might get axled in the mud or slide backwards down a hill, the truth is he can carry far greater speed in between the technical areas of this ride. While it sounds like I'm a little concerned, I know what lies ahead. The final rock climb on this trail is brutal. Not only is it a slick, steep rock wall, it requires both turning uphill and climbing over rutted out rock outcroppings. With a wheeled ATV, you need to hit the obstacles with proper momentum. However, the track kit had no issues clawing up the hill and never made me feel nervous of going over backwards. Climbing up this vertical wall gave me more confidence than a Dixie chick at a hoedown. This is one area I particularly notice a vast improvement with the tracks. Steep inclines are where a lot of riders become very nervous and can second guess themselves, the ATV, or both. Jeff and I are experienced riders and most inclines don't bother us too much. However, when you mix in rutted out rock shelves, it can make even experienced riders a little bit nervous. The tires on the Renegade couldn't quite find the initial grip on the slick rock, causing Jeff to have to back down and try a different line. The reduced footprint of the wheels caused the bike to become uneasy, proving just how much of an advantage the tracks gave me on this technical climb. Finishing this ride off at the top of the gnarliest climb on the miserable lake trail just solidified in my mind the tangible benefits that a track kit delivers outside of the obvious snow traveling abilities.
I truly feel that Jeff and I have a much greater understanding and appreciation for what a track kit can do in gnarly situations. While Jeff had far greater speed on the flat, smooth areas, the Camelplast T4S tracks gave me the clear advantage in the most technical areas and never for a second got stuck or slowed down. Most ATVers will associate a track kit with snow traveling, but I'm here to tell you that a Camelplast T4S kit is one amazing four-season piece of equipment, and it's been able to handle anything that I've thrown at it.